All right, let's jump right into this, picking up where we left off in the last video. Thanks for coming back. Today we're going over the installation of X, Y, and Z axes. At this point, it's critical to remove any existing debris from the previous steps. We want to keep the tolerances as tight as possible. I brought out a couple of cleaners, but warm water and a rag really did a nice job breaking up any leftover cement. I'm going to jump in and out in this video, so I'll let the time lapse do most of the talking. This next step is fine tuning or final tuning copelinary of the Y axis rails. As you can see here, I had some difficulty with placement of my dial indicator. If you set your dial indicator in the center, left to right, on the base plate, you won't be fumbling around like I did here. They cover this pretty well in the instructions video, but I was unable to slide the shims underneath without removing the rails altogether. I did break all the button head cap screws loose, but ended up having to take them out and remove the rails. Once the rails were removed, I found a bunch of cement and debris in and underneath the pockets between the stiffeners and the rail mounts, so I was happy I did. This process took me start to finish 45 minutes, but really should have taken me 20. I ran into problems in this next step of installing the linear rails. The kit includes four rails, two for the x-axis and two for the y-axis. They sent me four x-axis rails and in the instructions it's basically a picture with an arrow saying this should be bigger. They were talking about the rails should be wider and if you had two x and two y rails you would clearly see the difference. I didn't at the time, so I sent customer support an email with pictures and measurements of the rails that I had and continued with the project till I had to mount the lower x-axis mounts. They didn't match up to the linear rails, so I had to wait till customer support got back to me the next day. They were extremely helpful and also sent me a replacement dial indicator base that I somehow broke. They refused to overnight the rails to me, so I had to wait almost a week for them to arrive, and I was leaving for vacation. So I wasn't happy, but customer support did do the right thing. Not sure why, even with me offering to pay for the overnight shipping, they refused. Once they arrived, they were fairly simple to swap out, and I did that off camera.
the upper reference edge diversion sticker is placed on the bottom of the X rail and you'll need that information down the road. Here I'm not sure why they had me install the lower spindle mount after installing the x-axis. It seems it would have been easier to install when I had it laying on the table upside down. When you get to this point you're going to need the upper reference edge deviation picture we took earlier and now you have the tilt nod deviation card. This information gets entered into the web assembly guide and they let you know how many shims and whether they need in to be placed upper or lower on the face of the x-axis bearings. I needed eight shims total, four on each side of the lower rail bearing. Mounting the z-axis by myself wasn't too bad. I did bump the shims around and needed to use a coffee thermos to support the spindle while I moved them back into place. Leaving the wires wrapped up as they were shipped were, worked out perfect. They weren't hanging over the back of the machine or causing any issues. Removing lash from the ball screws was pretty straightforward. Langmuir's instruction video covered everything you'd want to know. Well, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video installing the electronics. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe.